It's 8 a.m., people. Time to wake up and change the channel. Welcome to Squawk Box Radio, the place where nothing real happens, and I don't care what you think about that. Today in the news, we see that cows are losing their jobs due to milk prices dropping. Water is the main reason for flooding. China is using the ocean to hide its submarines. And in health, how using your head more will result in fewer pregnancies. I'm your host, STDJ, the DJ that just won't go away. Today our guest is, um... Where's the sheet? I had it right here. I don't know. But there's no one in the studio except for this lousy producer. So, being the professional radio station we are, <laughs> we will, uh, we will, we'll talk to the first person I can get in here. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Want to be on the radio? Really? All right, man, well, hurry up and get up here. It's unbelievable, folks, but we got someone. Someone just happened to be walking by. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors, after we get him hooked up and into the studio. Do you like watching a channel where no one knows what's going on? Where variety is all over the place because I'd rather be a little weird than all boring? Then tune in to Bone13's channel where after you show up and stay a while, you will be more confused about life and gameplay. Come in and sit down, relax, and yell at your screen because Bone is going to do something wrong. Bone may actually do something right or funny, but it's not guaranteed. Have you seen those trees? You haven't. It's because Deuce cut them down or ran them over. If you're looking for tree chopping, bad driving, a constant state of confusion with your content, then tune in to Deuce MS. After subscribing to Deuce's channel, all of your stress and worries will just melt away. So drop what you're doing, drop by, drop a like or comment. I'll see you there. Watching Deuce does not actually help with anything. It might actually lead to more stress and anxiety. And we are back. Welcome, everyone. You are in for a special treat today because today we have... Dude, what's your name? My name is Travis Clark. Well then, let's turn on his mic. Get him some water. We have Travis Clark with us today. Say hi to all the people out there today, Travis. Hi. All right, folks. We got ourselves a real talker today. Travis, where are you from? Where am I from? No matter where we come from or where we're going, we've all got memories to contend with. And it's always best not to do it alone. Travis, my man, that is deep. Folks, we got us here a philosopher. But seriously, man, where are you from? The people got to know. We are all where we come from. We all have our roots. Some roots are deeper than others, but we all started somewhere. Any city name or state or, or hell, a planet would be nice. I'm from right here. Folks, we got ourselves a local. One of our very own. Here's some water. Thank you, sir. Sir? We don't call him sir. He's just the producer. Travis, sounds like wherever you came from, someone at least taught you manners. But manners don't work on the radio. You say what you mean. No need to be proper about it. I can't change who I am, just like you can't change who you are. I'm sure people have tried to change you, but in the end they have failed. Sometimes, though, all you need is a glimpse of something before you realize that you are capable of doing more than you have before. Are you a shrink, Travis? I'm too nuts to be a shrink. <laughs> Makes no sense to be nuts if you can't have a little fun with it. Oh, I had fun. Once. A long, long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. No. It was right here. In this very town. Well, I'm sure that the people are all waiting on the story of Travis. It's more like the fall of Travis. <laughs> Rise and fall. It happens to me every night. It's the story of my life. Tell us your life story, Travis. It all started when I was young. I was born on a farm. In a manger? There was mom, dad, my older brother Jackson, and my two younger sisters. So, Mary and Joseph, the three wise men, I think I've heard this story before. I was around six, and Jackson and I were outside walking the railroad tracks. Let me guess, you found a dead body. No, but I have seen plenty of death around me. But that comes at a later stage. Oh, spoilers. Continue. 
So Jackson and I were walking down the tracks, picking up stones. Bet you can't hit that sign from here. What do you want to bet me? I'll give you my snacks when we get back, if you do. What do you get if I miss? Um, snack for snack? Deal. So I picked up a rock and threw it as hard as I could. I threw it so hard that my eyes were closed. I heard the metal sign get hit. As I opened my eyes, I saw Jackson's mouth wide open. He couldn't believe it. I, I don't believe it. There's no way you could have hit that. It's like ha half a football field away. Looks like I'll be getting your snacks today. Double or nothing says you can't do it again. Why would I gamble again? I'm already up. Now you want me to risk everything I already won for a chance to lose it all? That's life. A series of gambles and risks. Some worth taking, others not so much. It's up to you to decide what risks you take. For more snacks, it's a risk worth taking. Okay, give it your best shot. With Jackson being ahead of me, I picked up a rock and got ready to throw. No pressure, little brother. I hated it when he called me that. I gripped that rock so tight that if it was cold, I could have made a diamond. I got my target in sight and threw the rock, hitting Jackson square in the back. Ow! Why you little? Jackson began to run after me. I was laughing, saying the risk was worth it. We ran back to the farm where mom and dad were outside working. Dad was fixing a fence and mom was tending to her flowers. Slow down! twerp i'm gonna get you hey if you have energy to run you have energy to work let them play dear they're having fun travis watch out i had my head turned looking at jackson and i didn't see the fence post that dad had just put in and ran right into it causing me and the post to hit the ground jackson caught up to me and was immediately on top of me trying to hold me down with his knee in my back, I knew I was in trouble. You ain't going anywhere now! Jackson! Get off of him! He could be hurt! Good! He should be! With Jackson digging his knee in harder in my back, I suddenly felt like I was flying. Listen here, you two. You are going to help me fix what you broke. Dad had lifted both of us up, one in each hand by our shirt collars. Now... Who is going to tell me who started this? Jackson was quick to answer. It was Travis, sir. He threw a rock at me. Is this true, Travis? Yes, sir. It was a calculated risk. Jackson, go inside. Travis and I are going to work on the fence. You should at least let Travis clean up. His nose is bleeding. It will be a reminder to him that even if you're bleeding, there is still work to be done. Jackson went inside and mom went back to her flowers and dad threw me a pair of gloves and we finished the fence. My hands had slivers in them and my shirt was caked in dirt, sweat and blood. A common thing in my youth. When we were done, mom and dad were sitting on the porch as I put the tools away. When I came back, I saw what I didn't know until later was a beautiful sight. Honey, our song. I still have energy. He stood up and extended his hand towards my mom and said, Excuse me, ma'am, but can I have this dance? She grabbed his hand and he helped her up and they started dancing. Both of them held each other tight and my mom started singing the song. It must have been that something lovers call fate Kept me saying I had to wait I saw them all, just couldn't fall till we met. It had to be you. It had to be you. Wandering around and finally found the somebody who Could make me be true. Could make me be blue. And even be glad just 
to be said thinking of you it was beautiful two people without a care in the world at that moment dancing and singing and just loving on one another as much as i've seen the song ended and my dad bowed down and said thank you my lady the pleasure was all mine <laughs> Mom did a curtsy and stuck out her hand, which my dad quickly snatched and kissed. My parents were always a loving couple, but they rarely showed any type of public affection towards each other. You got everything put away, son? Yes, sir. Good. Now go in and get yourself cleaned up. I need to talk to your mom in private. <laughs> yes, dear. Please hurry. It's really important what your dad needs to tell me. <laughs> I rushed inside and got cleaned up, changed my shirt and ran back outside. I didn't see mom or dad anywhere. Then I heard some noises and laughter inside the barn. I walked towards the barn and then my parents were coming out, holding hands and fixing their clothes. I noticed that mom had some straw in her hair. I asked, what were you doing in the barn? I had to show your mom something. And then she fell down the hail bales. Is she okay? Honey. Are you okay? I'm more than okay. I'm great. <laughs> you see, Travis? She's great. <laughs> Nothing to worry about, Travis. Now, who is ready to eat? I know. I worked up an appetite. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure your dad worked up an appetite. Anyways, I said I could eat. Okay, then. You can help me fix dinner. We all walked back inside and I helped mom make dinner. Dad cleaned up. During dinner, there wasn't much talking until mom said, Honey, remember when we first met? It was the best day of my life. Hey now, I thought I was your favorite day. Favorite day with you, boy. We met in high school. Your dad was a football player and I was in the choir. I sang the national anthem and when I was walking back into the stands, our eyes met. And well, we've been together ever since. I can't help but every time I see a flag raised, I think of your mom. Oh, honey. That is so sweet. Well, it's true. What do you see when you think of me? <laughs> a bank? <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> I, I don't get it. You will one day. With that, we finished the meal and got cleaned up and watched some TV in the family room and then went to bed. Travis, it sounds like you have an amazing family. I want to hear more about the rise and fall of Travis Clark. Can you come back tomorrow? Yes, I'll be here. There you have it, folks. The story continues tomorrow. Thank you all for listening. We'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. Need a new car? Ready for an upgrade? Then come to Mechanics Delight. You name it, we've got it, from pickups to cars and four-wheelers to work trucks. We've got the best and only deals in town. You won't believe these prices. Come on down and let's make a deal. Williams Mechanics Delight, your only place to get a ride. Taxes, fees, and pen costs may apply. Do you ever feel lost in the woods? Do you ever feel alone with nothing to do? Then book your stay at the Lazy Bear Lodge, a place that offers nothing but bugs and some of the doors don't even work. A place where you can leave it all behind. Blazer Bear Lodge is your place to kick back now. Taxes and shovels to bury bodies, not included press. Thank you again for joining us today. Now, on the DJ Rocky and his tantalizing tales of petrology. 